Hello everybody, this is Yasmin from YarkSpiriFantasyArt.com. Uh, today I'm actually going to show you some more basic tutorials uh, on how to actually use Photoshop. Because uh, I do realize that some of my viewers don't actually understand how to use Photoshop or haven't used Photoshop or are debating whether or not to use Photoshop in comparison to some other software. Uh, this series of tutorials should help you figure out which one you prefer to use. Now to get started, I'm just going to go over the basics of how Photoshop works interface-wise. Because it is slightly different than uh, compared to some other softwares out there. Uh, in the top right hand corner, uh, you can actually change how you view um, your interface. So, right now mine is sent to Essentials, but depending on how I'm using the software, I can change it to another default setting. So, if I didn't want to use Essentials and I'm doing mostly design based uh, projects, then I might switch to this type of interface. You'll notice that on the right hand side this has been simplified because it I don't require uh, a lot of the extras that were included in the essentials. In the essentials I have adjustments, I have information about my mask, my colors, I have several different uh, tool options on the side here. I can change my channels and paths but in the design one it's like I said, simplify because I don't require as much of that information. This is mostly for editing purposes, so you have your basic, basic colors, uh, assuming that you keep to the default settings. Uh, you do have your main history, which is pretty much standard for any of these three tabs up here. And it's mostly text editing that you'll see uh, in the center window on the right hand side. And then I have my layers, channels, and paths once again. Now, let's say I wasn't doing a design-based project, I was doing more of a painting type project. Then I would just click uh, the painting tabs. Now, once again, this changes what you're going to view. So these tabs are all specialized towards items that you would use if you're doing exclusively painting type projects. So here I can actually edit my brush settings, I have my history once again. I also have some tool presets I can tweak and modify. The main focus is being able to actually see my brushes because uh, if you're painting that is very useful information because it gives you essentially a preview on how the brush will actually function. Uh, now in the bottom here once again this is pretty much standard it doesn't change for uh, those three options up top here um, and it pretty much stays standard. Now there is a couple of different ones that you could uh, change to, there's the 3D motion. Um, you can also save a new workspace. I'm not going to go through this mainly because unless you are very particular in what you like to see, it's not really a necessary step. Um, that end, you would have to re-upload that, that save file if you do change computers. So I tend not to use that. I don't tend to customize my workspace. I will customize my brushes because those make a huge difference, but I won't normally customize my workspace. Now, I like having full control on my projects, so I'm going to go back to Essential. Uh, this one gives me a lot more of the tools that are normally used for photo editing, but it also combines the photo editing options along with the painting and everything else, so it has everything in this window, which is why I tend to use the Essentials uh, workspace option instead. Now uh, another important feature, I don't really use these. Um, this is called the application bar right here. Uh, some people use it. I haven't tinkered with these options as of yet. What I find more useful however is this row right here. Uh, this row has the individual options that I can change for any given tool. So right now, because I wrote some text here, um, I have uh, all my text options here. There's a lot of options to go through. I'll have to go to uh, through these individually uh, because there is so many options that's, that you can do for most of these tools. And because they're so numerous, I can't cover it in this first video. 
but I'm just going to change to the selection tool. And as you can see, when I click this tool here, the selection tool, it shows me once again all my different options. And there's a lot of very useful options up here. Uh, once again, I won't have enough time in this particular video to go through them all, uh, but it's definitely worth investing some extra time, uh, no matter what you do, on checking out all these different options. So these are the individual options for the individual tools. The tools are on the far left hand side of your window. So what you have here is essentially all the tools that you would, that comes normally with Photoshop. Now some of these tools also have some sub tools. So if I click on here and hold, it gives me options. It gives me different options for that one particular tool. So right now I selected the marquee tool, but there's different types of marquee tools. Certain ones are designed to give you a very specific shape, like the rectangular marquee tool and then the elliptical marquee tool. Some of them also behave slightly differently. So if I check here, I'm going to go uh, under the eyedrop here. As you can see, once again, there's more than one option here. Uh, for most cases, you won't require all these extra options. Uh, these are nice to understand how they work, but in most cases, you won't need to actually use these. So I'm just going to go back to my selection tool here. Okay, on the right hand side, you have your panels. And essentially what these do is they offer you a lot of options. So if I wanted to select a very specific color and I wanted to uh, just uh, sample the colors, I can do that here. And as you can see, uh, let's say I like this color, but I just wanted to make it change it slightly. I can do that with these scrollers as well. I don't normally uh, use this feature. I normally actually uh, just use the, the tool here which essentially has the same thing, but it's larger, so it's easier for me to see. And it also shows me a comparison uh, between the original color and the color that I've moved my cursor across. So I'm just going to close that. Over here, you have your basic swatches. Now, this is pretty much the basic swatches that you would normally see in Photoshop. I have added these last two rows. These are my own uh, preferred samples of colors. But other than that, these upper rows are all the default settings that normally come with Photoshop. In most cases, unless you actually do uh, painting on a regular basis and for actual concept art purposes and professionally as an illustrator, you probably won't need to go any further past these basic colors. Um, I personally, I've been doing uh, like I do quite a few drawings on a regular basis and I actually don't find the need to uh, change these settings. Now there is a method to change these settings and I'll show that to you guys in a later video. Um, but like I said, it's not necessary to use. So I'm just going to close that. And this is your history. Essentially what the history is, is it's saved uh, progressions of how you actually modified your, your work. Now it does have a specific default setting to this so you only have a certain number that you can undo and go back to unless you change those preferences. Uh, the default preferences are normally what you want to stick with though because uh, it will slow down your computer if you change those too often or too too much of a high number. I'm just going to close that. Um, so yeah there's a lot of tools in here that are extremely useful it's a really good idea to play around with these just because there's so many useful tools here. Now what happens for the, the adjustments here is depending on what you're using because you can create an adjustment layer here this will refresh to whatever adjustment you've used, you're using currently. Uh, once again I don't play around with this uh, unless I'm actually adding an adjustment layer because uh, this refreshes automatically. Now here you have your layers and the nice thing about the layers is that this gives you a large range of control over your elements within your piece. Um, I have two layers at the moment. What I did is I actually flattened my background so it's one piece so if I turn that off all you see is the, the flattened image uh, writing and then I have my text on a separate layer. 
Uh, this means, because these are on two separate layers, that I can move, if my uh, text layer is selected and I have the selection tool, that I can move my text wherever I want and modify it without affecting the background. And that's a really important feature for anything because it does really save you a lot of time and hassle depending on what you're doing. Now on the bottom here uh, is extremely useful um, options here. On the bottom here you have uh, you have a couple of different things that you could do. I tend to use uh, these two options. This one creates a mask, a layer mask, and this one is your adjustments layer. But it saves it as a separate layer so that you can turn it off. That is extremely useful, which is why I use it a lot. I also use my groups and new layer, obviously. Um, the trash can is kind of obvious. It's for getting rid of layers that you don't want. Uh, with these layers, too, you can also lock these layers so that there's no modifications that can be done. That's what I've done to my background. It's done automatically uh, by default. Uh, and you can turn that off, but I'll show you guys that in a different video. I just want to show you guys the tabs now. The tabs are the different windows. Now what I've done is I've actually uh, made sure I had two different texts here so that it would be easier for you guys to understand which one's which. Uh, so this was a flattened image and then this that's one file and this is a second file uh, completely separate from that and the nice thing about these windows is if you want you can pull them out or you can put them on the bottom if you don't want to see it at all uh, so unless I actually uh, maximize this again and I put it back up here it stays hidden and it's out of the way that has a couple of different uh, useful um, applications depending on what you're trying to do because you can actually take a text layer from uh, one of your uh, tabs here and I move it on to another one so if I did a background that I really liked and I, I didn't want to have to do the work again why would I do the work I would just uh, click and drag it onto the next page uh, up here now I've actually enabled my ruler guide I do recommend you do that especially if you're going to intend to make images that are very specific sizes uh, and if you have to keep in mind crop marks and all that I generally keep that in mind because for printing purposes later on it greatly simplifies the process uh, now there's a keyboard shortcut for doing that all I did hit was hit control R and it turns off my ruler control R again and it turns it back on very useful uh, it's definitely something you want to remember because it's extremely useful as a feature. I generally keep the ruler on. I never turn it off, but there's actually quite a few different applications for that ruler. Once you have it enabled, that really can simplify your life, and I'll show that to you guys in a different video. Okay, so that's it for now. That's uh, just a basic overview of how Photoshop works. Um, in the next tutorial, I'll actually be going through each portion in more detail. So thank you for watching and take care.